Hello everyone and welcome to another video tutorial. Today we're going to go through paid reporting through Looker Studio. So for those of you who want to create a report to understand how your pages are performing, pay attention, this is what we're going to do. So step number one, obviously we need to access our Looker Studio. So you're going to go to lookerstudio.google.com and we're going to start creating the report from scratch. So we're going to click here on blank report. And the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to select Google Analytics and we are going to select the Google Analytics account and GA4 property that we want to work on. And then we're going to go all the way on the bottom right and click add. And this is going to establish a connection between your GA4 and Looker Studio. Now, what do we need to do next? We're going to build a report that is relevant to pages and content performance. In order to get there first, I want to tell you a few things about Looker Studio just to understand how the tool works. So on the top menu, there is this button that says insert. So you're going to click on insert and let's do some simple things. So we're going to add a rectangle here and this is going to be the header of our report and we're going to customize it from the right hand side. So I'm going to make it green maybe here, maybe a little bit smaller. And perhaps we're going to add some text just to get familiar with how everything works. So we're going to click on insert again, select text, and this is going to be the title of my report. I'm going to call it test page performance report. And we are going to customize also the text from the right hand side. I'm going to make the letters white and a little bit bigger make them bold, align them in the middle, and that's the starting point. So now let's get started with the serious part. So how are we going to create a page performance report? The first thing you need to do is you need to click here on insert and select scorecard. So you're going to add certain metrics that will present basically the key statistics of all the pages of your website. And what are the key statistics? So we need to have the metric that is called sessions, first of all. So I'm going to add this core card. I'm going to go here on the right hand side and I'm going to select sessions. Then I'm going to copy paste this core card, control C, control V. And I'm going to go and add the metric that is called views, which is the equivalent of page views. And then I'm going to copy also this metric. And from there, ideally, you need to measure your soft KPIs. So in this case, we are going to go with event count. In your case, you can also narrow down to the events or the actions that matter for you. And then we want our hard KPIs. So we are going to copy paste again this scorecard and we're going to select conversions. So in your case, again, you can select any conversion that you want. Now, this overview is relevant to all the pages of my website. So I'm going to add some text here and i'm going to say that this is relevant to all pages so this is the performance of all my pages during a given time period so which time period are we investigating here one more thing that we need to do is we need to go on insert and add a date range control and i'm going to drop it here so now we can actually change the date range and let's say, for example, here, we're going to look into this year to date. And one more thing that I'm going to do here, let me make this a little bit smaller so it looks better. One more thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to select my scorecards, all of them. I'm going to go on the right hand side, click on comparison date range, and then compare with previous periods. So now we are looking at this year to date information and we are comparing with the previous period so all these indicators are basically the comparison with the previous period now what i want you to do is i want you to think about the structure of your website when i say the structure of your website what kind of categories or pages you have on your website for example maybe you have category pages maybe product pages maybe you have a blog Maybe you have pages that are relevant to certain products, for example. Maybe you have features, maybe you have pricing. So think about how your website is structured. 
And why we want to do that is because this is the top level performance of all the pages of our website. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate everything, we're going to copy paste everything, and we are going to create the same format, the same type of reporting for the most important sections of our website. So I'll use my website here as a guinea pig. So for example, here we have pages that are relevant to templates. So you can see, for example, here that I have a lot of different templates. And these templates, they have a specific pattern in URL. So always there is a URL that goes B2B reporting template, SEO reporting template, and so forth. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say that this set of scorecards is relevant to templates. And I'm going to click on one of the scorecards, go on the setup column, scroll down, and click on filter. And I'm going to name this filter templates. And I'm going to say here that this filter should include only the full page URL that contains. And since we sense contains, we don't need to put the full URL, does template. So this filter is going to narrow down the performance only to the pages that are relevant to templates. And I'm going to apply basically this filter on all of my scorecards here. So now you can see where we're going now with this logic, right? So we have, for example, all pages. This is the performance of all the pages. This is the performance only of my templates. And let's actually duplicate once again and just create basically a third category here. Let's say that I also want to include top level performance of my posts my blog. So I need to understand basically what is the pattern of my blog, right? So once we go here to the blog, let me actually click on a blog basically here and understand what is the pattern of the URL. So the pattern is slash post slash post name. So we're going to use this pattern to filter down to all the pages that are posts, right? So we're going to come here, we're going to click on this scorecard. Again, we are going to go on the right hand side under the setup column. We're going to remove this filter and we're going to add a new one. And this new one, I'm going to name it post. And I'm going to go and follow the same pattern here. I'm going to say that the full page URL contains, and here we're going to say slash post. So when the full page URL contains slash post, this filter is basically going to narrow down only on my content. So I'm going to basically replace this filter with post. So now we have three rows basically on the top. The first one is all pages. The second one, the second one is templates. The third one is posts. This is the starting point. So as a starting point, I want you to basically think about what is the structure of your website and then break it down and have a top level performance of all the different categories and key pages of your website to understand the top level picture. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to click here on insert. Actually, before we do that, because we run out of space, we're going to click here on page, current page settings. We're going to go to style and add a lot more pixels here. So now we have a lot more space to play with. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on insert and add a table, right? So we're going to add a table and on the right hand side, we're going to change the dimension to full page URL. And then here in the table, we're going to add all the metrics that matter. For example, sessions, views, soft KPIs, which is event count and hard KPIs, which is conversion basically here. So let me select the table. So conversions. And a couple of things that I always like to do, since we have a table, we can go up, click on the chart and convert this into a heat map so the table becomes a lot clearer to digest. And then we can also go under the setup column here. We can click on show summary row. So we have basically the aggregation of all the pages on the last row of my table. And we can scroll a little bit further down, click on comparison date range, and compare with the previous period. So we have the delta column, and we can understand the movements when it comes to traffic, views, soft KPIs, and hard KPIs, which pages are 
performing better, which pages are performing worse, comparing to the previous period. So this is the table now that is relevant to all my pages, right? So this is all page breakdown. So let's actually add a label here. And you have here all pages breakdown. So all pages breakdown. I'm going to basically add this label here, have everything sorted in the middle. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to follow the same pattern for all the different categories, right? So we have a table that includes the performance of all pages. Obviously, you can customize it any way you want. You can add, let's say, your own metrics or your own, uh, let's say, events and conversions. The next one is going to be templates breakdown. And how are we going to narrow down to templates here? We already created a, a filter relevant to templates. So I'm going to select my table, go to setup, and then add the filter here that is called template. So this table will only report on template pages. And then I'm going to duplicate a third time. And this is going to be my posts breakdown. So now I'm going to click here on this table. I'm going to click on the setup and I'm going to change the filter to post. So now I have three tables. The first one is a breakdown of all the pages. The second one is a breakdown only of my templates. The third one is a breakdown of my posts. One more thing that I think is very useful for everyone who is reporting on page performance to know, other than the full breakdown of every page and its performance, is it is important to understand the trend line. So I want to click here on insert, select a time series chart and paste it here. And this time series chart is going to report on sessions and views of all the pages on my website. So this is what the chart is going to report on. And then I'm going to also compare with the previous period. So now I'm going to have also the comparison with the previous period. In order to make the chart maybe clearer, let me remove the views here and have only sessions. So the dark blue line is the sessions this year, the, uh, the last 28 days. The light blue line is the sessions the previous 28 days. And I'm going to actually copy this three times, my three times, because now we have three categories here that we are investigating. And then my second chart is going to be relevant here. We're going to scroll down and select the filter as templates. And then we're going to scroll down and select the filter as posts. Let me actually beautify a little bit everything, although it's not the most beautiful report. So now we have the trend lines. Let me add also some labels here. So this is all pages. This is basically my templates here. And this is the posts. I have. So we have basically this report that is very descriptive and very, very clear to understand the performance on all the pages of my site. Because what we can do here is we can go, for example, and look at this year to date performance. Immediately, I'm able to understand the big picture, how much traffic I'm getting in total, how many views, page views I'm getting in total, how many soft KPIs and hard KPIs. I can understand the contribution of the different categories to the total. So I can see that the majority of my traffic on the site here comes from my blog, basically my resource pages. 23,000 sessions in total, 20K comes from posts. Then I can see the trend line. So all pages is moving up. I can see the trend line of templates. I can see the trend line when it comes to posts here. And I can compare also with the previous period, right? So I can actually see how this trend line compares with the previous period. And then I can go and scroll down, for example, and I can see a breakdown of all the different pages. If I want to deep dive, I can see a breakdown of one category of my website and the second category of my website. So this is the ideal page performance report that you can create through Google Analytics 4 using 
Looker Studio. If you like this video and you learned something new, please like and subscribe. It is very important for me to keep creating great content for you. Have a great day in any time zone. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments. See you in the next one.